screen mein undi sir sir we are live to the world now babu do kuch kuch dikha ji both youtube and facebook is it video or only audio video is struck only audio is there video is not there okay you can play video later try ppt okay now make it full screen సార్ ఫస్ట్ ఏదైనా స్టార్ట్ చేయండి సుబ్రహ్మ గారు యా వెల్కమ్ టు పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ అండ్ వి హావ్ స్పీకర్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ఇండియా మిస్టర్ రాజరాజ్ సత్యనారాయణ ద రిటైర్డ్ ఏజిఎం ఆఫ్ ఆర్ రిజర్వ్ బ్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా హ్యాస్ రిచ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ వర్కింగ్ ఇన్ ది వాలంటరీ సెక్టర్ particularly in the career building and confidence building among the youth associated with uh, Ramakrishna Math for more than two decades. And we have uh, uh, Purushottam, Professor Purushottam Redigaru, a political science professor working in the areas of democracy and uh, uh, policy aspects of it. And we have Raj Babu. Uh, who has a rich experience working in the air india and also is a trained yoga teacher uh, from none other than girendra brahmachari long back when he was working in uh, highest mountains of himalayas the a- airport we have at the you know uh, highest peak and uh, dr murthy is a hydrogeologist and a scientist and he claims himself partial limnologist uh, and uh, we have philbit seka the ceo of center for leadership and character education and uh, the prime purpose of uh, we we are making an attempt to bring the key players uh across different uh, across different parts of the world uh to discuss de- deliberate on certain common issues the first international conference was held on climate change and its impact on uh, both natural and human resources and economic issues and uh, today's uh, debate uh, deliberations is on um you know character building character education and mostly and uh, mr philbit sika the ceo and welcome sir welcome uh, dr alan saunders welcome sir you can unmute your mic sir good morning 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 and uh, interestingly oh, we have people from good morning good afternoon and good night mr sekha enters in you know uh, i would like to uh, invite the participants uh, uh, for an open discussion on you know 
to initiate on the status of education and uh, why we are focusing more on the character education, values and ethics. And I request uh, Professor Pushottam Reddy, Philbit, you unmute your mic. Philbit, unmute your mic. I'll send him a message in the chat. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah. Please, I hand over, I hand over uh, you know, the floor to Mr. Philbit Sika. Philbit Sika? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah, one yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> So I just thought, you know, before uh, these two speakers join us, I thought, you know, just an initiation to the, uh, you see, in 90s, people started uh, uh, discussing on sustainable education. Uh, just before the, and uh, the subjects like ethics, values, and character in education system is an universal phenomena, time and space. I request Professor Purushottam Reddy to, you know, throw some light on this as an initial, you know, dialogue and some tips to Porus Dada Boy. Uh, good morning, sir. Welcome to the floor. Dada Boy, please unmute your mic. Dadabai is from Chicago and he represents a group, uh, uh, Citizens Advocacy Center Chicago functions on democracy. And uh, the floor is, and uh, for us Dadabai. Yes, sir. Uh, this morning you just, uh, you know, uh, informed me about your initiations in character education through Rotary Clubs in the USA. Yes, yes they, did, they did character education uh, several years ago, about eight years ago. Okay. So I just requested Professor Purushottam Reddy to initiate and then, you know, you can throw some light before, because you, you told me that you cannot be able to sit long time. So, Professor yes. Pushottam ready some two to four, three minutes for initiation. Unmute your mic, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Suparogaru. Uh, I wish to state a few points as just to uh, like a starter. <laughs> Uh, basically, whenever we are talking about character and education, we and also leadership, we are instantaneously reminded of uh, Plato. Plato, an all-time great political thinker, a student of uh, Socrates, uh, in his Republic, in his book Republic, he gives a scheme of uh, education, a 35-year scheme right from day one, right? Because in that particular ideal state, which he created in the book Republic, all the babies born are handed over to the state and the state ensures uh, absolute equal uh, treatment, equal uh, facilities to all. And you know, of course, this is all idealism. It's very difficult to education. practice, but that scheme of education is excellent. The first examination is after the 20-year compulsory scheme. Uh, and uh, all those who fail to pass, they become, uh, they, they take to agriculture, business, trade, commerce, or whatever. And then those who get through that particular examination, they become guardians. In other words, those in, think of uh, 2,500 years ago, when it was extremely difficult for the states to protect their identity, you know, security was a major concern and therefore a large number of uh, youngsters were drafted for army or defense and uh, they were termed as guardians. And uh, they again, you know, a 10 year intensive education to make them better uh, defense personnel. And after the age of 30, a second exam and uh, all those who fail to get through they become soldiers and those who get through 
they are given a very specialized education uh, focusing on governance and it is here you know they are taught the, the higher values of life uh, particularly logic public policy political science and ultimately yeah. uh, it is a technique by itself where the rulers will have to understand the rising aspirations of the teeming millions this is very important yeah politics but... is not for self but for society therefore that uh, that was the thing and plato's idea of philosopher king a philosopher king is a very selfless person he is the best person in the society absolutely dedicated to the welfare of the people but that is idealism in real terms it is very difficult it yeah. is almost impossible my humble request for sir purushottam reddy yeah please uh, uh, and uh, we have now the key uh, speaker dr matt davidson yes 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 please. and and uh, so phil bit sikka would you like to go for presentation of the center for uh, you know leadership your presentation uh, now matt davidson is uh, here or you would like please unmute your mic Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Good morning uh, and good evening and uh, good afternoon to some of uh, of you. Great. Welcome to this uh, international online conference. Uh, I would like to quickly uh, introduce the center uh, of the, for, the, for leadership and karate education. Uh, So the Center for Leadership in Karate Education is a non-for-profit organization registered in Washington, D.C., uh, which is envisioned to build an effective leadership based on quality education through karate development. Uh, the Center held several international workshops and conferences for educators, government officials, members of parliament, mayors, decision makers, women and youth in Africa, USA, and Asia on the topics of leadership, education, character development, climate, and environment. The center was launched in 2018 in the representative office of Africa Union at UN headquarters in New York in presence of the ambassador of Africa Union at a UN Uh, at UN and several high level. In total, we have 23 nationalities who attend the luncheon. As we all know, our world is at a crossroads of its future. Since the two biggest devastated war, World War I and II, even though we didn't have such kind of wars anymore, but we constantly face tension between and within nation natural disasters lack of uh, capacity capacities to address issues such as good governance pollution hunger health the latest is uh, the coronavirus pandemic which has claimed the lives of nearly 2 or 3 million people worldwide and the search for a solitary solution for which is still uncertain these fundamental traits to our world bring us to reflect on the intrinsic nature of our leaders to make the best decision for all through this international online conference the center for leadership and karate education wish to make its contribution to the culture of true karate development to uplift effective leaders at all level namely individual family nation and the world welcome to the conference and thank you very much thank you phil uh, betseka uh, please unmute your mic uh, dr mac uh, davidson yeah it's my privilege and honor to uh, introduce dr mac davidson today's key speaker 
Matthew L. Davidson is an original founder and the current president of the Excellence with Integrity Institute. Dr. Davidson has de dedicated over 25 years to the theory, practice, and assessment of character and culture with special emphasis on leadership and organizational development. Through his work at the Institute, Dr. Davidson seeks to foster optimal performance in individuals and organizations through the assessment and development of excellence, integrity, teamwork, and intrapersonal social development. The excellence with integrity assessment and development tools have been used in a wide range of educational, youth development, government, and workplace settings, as well as with student athletes and coaches in high school and division one, two, three, intercollegiate athletics. In October 2016, he participated in a sport at Service of Humanity, the first global conference on faith and sport conveyed by Pope Francis at the Vatican in Rome. Dr. Davidson is a co-author of Culture of Excellence and Ethics Assessment. School surveys which have been re recognized as valid and reliable instruments by experts at the Office of the Safe and Drug-Free Schools are a recommended survey in the Federal School Climate Survey Compendium. CEEA school surveys have been utilized by K-12 education organizations and educational researchers in So now I introduce Dr. Matt Davidson. Dr. Davidson, the floor is yours. You have, uh, say, 10 to 15 minutes. Dr. Davidson. Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for having me. Um, uh, Philbert, um, if you're able to, um, I, I was going to do a screen share. I think Alan said that you would help me uh, to be able to do that. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with you today, and I'm uh, looking forward to um, being able to share some thoughts about uh, the theory, the research, and the practice that we've been working on. I was reflecting this morning, I think uh, I began the work in character education in 1993 with my colleague, Tom Lacona. Um, that was 28 years ago. Um, 14 of those years have been um, spent in, uh, with our own nonprofit, Excellence with Integrity Institute. One second, um, please, uh, uh, Dr. Dave. Philbert, you have to make me, you have to remake me the host. Okay. Philbert, make me host. Actually, you have a host. I'm the host? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I'm making Matt, Matt uh, Okay. He needs Dr. to be able Davidson, to use his PowerPoint. Dr. Davidson, okay. now you are the host and you can, um, you have the access yeah. to the screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Beautiful. Um, well, one thing um, that I'm not known for is to talk um, succinctly or slowly. So today will be a challenge for me on both those fronts. Um, I did try in my PowerPoint to be able to share a number of links and resources so that you would be able to follow up um, on the ideas that I'm sharing with you here today. And I wanted to uh, provide a blend of both the theory um, and the background behind our approach that's developed over these last 30 years. Um, it's meant to be uh, deeply philosophical. Um, it's meant to be practical and pragmatic we do our work at the front line. We work in real schools with real families, with real organizations. And what we're constantly trying to do is to get to the simplicity beyond complexity. So in what I'm sharing you with you today, there are curricular resources um, that we have access to. 
There are assessment tools that we have access to. There are um, additional resources from our website um, that I've tried to reference within the PowerPoint. The irony a little bit in the title of my presentation, Leading Through Culture and Character, is that in 1993, um, what I was most focused on was character. And what we meant by that really was moral character. The character needed to treat each other with respect and care. This visual here represents the evolution of our work. And it represents some of what I think is really important as we try to render character relevant for the challenges that we face today. One of the most important things is at the time we thought about character as important for its own right and in its own sake. And yet many schools and communities and, and government organizations were asking character to what end? Why do we need this? And one thing we came to realize was that character was needed to achieve excellence. The optimal performance that we seek in schools and communities and government organizations um, can be achieved best and in a most sustainable way when it has excellence with integrity. So when we think about leading for character, one, we have to look at what happens on both sides of it. Um, by training, I was an educational psychologist, and so I was looking at the individual. Um, how do we develop character in the individual? My colleague, uh, Vlad Kamelkov, was a sociologist, and he kept saying, it's the culture that shapes or corrupts the individual. Um, as much as I might want to be uh, a strong person of character, if you put me into an environment, a team, a classroom, a government that is corrupt, that culture will corrupt the, the character that we see. So one is culture shapes or corrupts character. Therefore, if we want to shape character, we must be thinking about culture. And then the final question is, but who shapes culture? Where does that culture come from? And that's where the leadership comes in. It is the leaders who shape the clarity of expectations. It is the leaders who shape the habits the mindset, the accountability. Leaders shape culture, culture shapes character. It's character that then leads to optimal performance. Now, as we backfill a little bit of our theory on where this came from, you have a visual here that represents some of our earliest work. The Smart and Good High Schools report, which I have on this screen, you can download um, from the link below. This was a national study that my colleague Tom Lacone and I did of exemplary high schools. And at the time when we were talking about character education, we were talking about moral character. And yet we asked ourselves in secondary schools, why aren't more teachers doing this? And what we realized was that we were really um, under appreciating the importance of performance character. The Greeks taught a great deal about excellence and the character needed to achieve excellence. And in this representation, what we began to talk about was the balance of performance character and moral character. A two dimensional visual where they are needed and complementary to each other. One way to think about this is in muscles, if you have a very strong quad muscle in the front of your leg, and a weak hamstring, you will have knee problems. Every muscle requires balance, biceps, triceps. The stronger our performance character, the more we strive for excellence, for greatness, for achievement, the stronger our moral character muscle must be. Um, and so this really helped us to begin thinking about new and different ways to render character relevant. In the last 15 years, we've taken our two dimensional idea and we've expanded it some. We think about this as what we sometimes call our pinwheel. In individuals and organizations, thriving comes when there is strong and balance between excellence, integrity, teamwork, self work, excellence, integrity, intrapersonal within myself and interpersonal. 
if you have strong excellence and weak integrity, you start to see imbalances. If you have strong excellence and integrity, but within yourself, there's a weakness. There isn't growth. There isn't a, a sense of balance. There, you get stress. And what we really begin to see here is these need to be individually strong, but also balanced. And so I'm trying to show how we have evolved our work to be both complex and simple. Now these 10 focus areas evolved in our work because many educators and communities said, um, that's a lot of complex theory. What do I need for my students? What do we need for our citizens? And, and these areas, leadership, goal achievement, life purpose and balance, communication and collaboration. These are 10 areas of focus um, that we bring wherever we go. Um, whether it's in elementary schools, whether it's in colleges, whether it's in workforce development, what we're really working on are these 10 essential areas. Now, behind those areas, you can see the infrastructure, the balance of all of this competing and, and contributing theory. We have our four components, excellence, integrity, teamwork, self-work. Those are then broken down into those 10 areas of focus. The 10 common areas that people say they need help on. And then what we've done is we've taken those and we've broken them down in terms of competencies. Competencies, um, capabilities. This is what we want people to do better or differently. These are the skills or the building blocks of virtue. We can break these down into small pieces of what we want to see people be able to do better or differently. So when we look at this complex theory, um, there's a fabric behind it. There's philosophy, there's sociology, there's psychology. There's a whole bunch going on. But when we get practical, when we come down and we say, well, look, leaders shape culture, culture shapes character, character leads to optimal performance. How do we do this in practice? The irony of leadership development is that most times when it's delivered, it's really self-improvement, it's self-help. It's how do I develop things that make me more successful? But what we're really talking about with leadership is leaders leading others. This is one of the practical tools that we've developed. A tool is a more efficient and consistent way to do a job. If you think about the evolution of the hammer, we could pound a nail in with a rock. We could take that rock and we could, you know, tie it to a stick. Eventually we get to a point where we have a whole bunch of different hammers and that helps us to more efficiently and consistently do a job. What we've developed over 30 years are tools for shaping character and culture. And this is one of them. What do we see in this tool? What we're really often trying to do is define a continuum. What does it look like? What's the fullness of it? What's the absence? Aristotle famously said years and years and years ago, virtue is the mean between excess and deficiency. Virtue is the middle. What we're often trying to do is to help individuals and organizations to define what does it look, sound, and feel like when we're talking about leadership. So with this leader detractor scale, we use this as a way of having a dialogue. We might be working with a classroom. We might be working with a nonprofit organization where we say, what kind of behaviors do we want to see in leaders? What is it that leaders do? They speak the truth. They challenge others. They do their part and lead others. What about participants? Participants come and show up. They're here. They do the minimum. They do enough. What about detractors? What are detractors doing in this classroom, on this team, in this organization? And what we're really trying to do is to begin shaping individual and collective habits. Leaders shape culture. How do they do that? 
This is what we might call our operating system. This is what really makes it drive. And what we're doing with a leader to detractor tool is we're trying to help leaders to clarify expectations. What does it look and sound and feel like? Leaders shape culture by clarifying expectations. Do this, not that. This is what we need to see more of. This is what we need to see less of. Leaders shape culture by forming habits. If this is what we say we believe in, if this is what matters to us then, how do we begin meetings? How do we end meetings? How do we challenge one another? What are our habits? Once we have a tool like the leader to detractor tool, we're shaping our expectations. We're forming habits around that. It also allows us the ability to then provide accountability. If these are what our expectations are, these are our habits, how are we gonna hold each other accountable to this? And then finally, mindset, why? Why does it matter? Why is this important to us? Why does this align with our values and our vision? Um, when we look and we say leadership culture, in our work over 30 years, what we've been trying to get to is what's consistent beyond talent, beyond ability, beyond charisma, what is it that great leaders do? They clarify expectations, they form habits, they provide accountability, they provide mindset. If you look at our leader to detractor scale, the key is this. Yes, we want individuals who know what leadership looks and sounds and feels like. We want individuals in our classrooms, on our teams, in our businesses to be better people. But if we want that, the way to get that, the mechanism is to have the entire culture thinking about these kinds of things. It's clarifying for the group, what are our expectations? What's the leader look like? What's a participant? It's not sending them off to their own self-help work, their own self-improvement. So again, if you think about what we're trying to get to, we're trying to take those big ideas, those big virtues that we care so deeply about, and we're trying to put them into a system that is replicable. Leaders shape culture, culture shapes character, character leads to optimal performance. What do we mean by character? Performance character, moral character, character that speaks to excellence, integrity, intrapersonal strength, interpersonal strengths. What do we mean by culture? Collective habits, how we do things together. And this is, you know, simple but not easy when we say culture is the mechanism. And for a character educator, that was really a bit of a, um, a, a hard lesson for me to learn. I'm passionate about character and virtue, but if you ask, how does it develop, it's the culture. And then if you ask who develops cultures, it's leaders. And therefore, even though I'm a character educator, I find the majority of the time that I spend is teaching people how to shape and assess culture and how to teach leaders how to go about um, doing their leadership amid really difficult circumstances and with their mission and vision. Philbert mentioned, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, we can quickly lead from our circumstances instead of leading from our vision. Character has never been more important, uh, but we must lead from our vision, not our circumstances. The final piece of our science is the assessment. How do you measure this? And one of the things that um, we're doing in our instrument is literally measuring character and culture. Um, and there's a number of different ways in which we're finding that um, we can measure character better when we do it from a culture perspective. Uh, our assessment tools uh, show you how we go about doing that. And then finally, if you're really looking to get to that practical concrete, um, where's the lesson plans? How do I actually go about doing that? Uh, over 25 years, uh, we finally got the competencies and the tools and the materials down into simple and yet not simplistic uh, curricular resources that can be adapted uh, or adopted. I think I'm at the close of my time. And so um, again, I'm hoping that within the PowerPoint, 
Um, you've got the links and stuff that you can then uh, utilize to track down the additional information that you need as you go about this important work that you're doing. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Davidson. Hello. Uh, Dr. Davidson, can you make me the host? Uh, yes, I can. Um, um, yeah. Uh, uh, can you can you tell me um, how to go about doing that? I just no, I don't no, want to mess up. To, just go to my name. The Subaru, Subaru, Subaru in the beginning. Okay. Uh, got more people on here now. I'm looking for your. Uh, believe it or not, I'm not finding your name in my mix here. Look on the it, It's my first name. It's above your oh, gotcha, name. Gotcha, 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 find it. Go there and done. you find, you, you uh, done? Done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The group yeah, is now safe. It, it, it's a wonderful thing, you know, to understand the uh, dynamics of leadership, you know, how do we groom the leadership and all. How the leader, you know, influences and make a change in the culture and how the cultural ethos will make a leader. It's a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, study, and um, we'll come back in this, and then uh, now we'll come back to you, Dr. Davidson, after you know all the speakers are done, okay? And uh, now I, re I invite. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce uh, Mr. Adiraj Sachinarayana, uh, the retired. Assistant General Manager from Reserve Bank of India. He more than a banker, he's a social activist. I, I, I could observe him for decades. He served the bank for more than four decades. And uh, he was also associated with uh, Ramakrishna Mutt, a philanthropic institute in the country, well uh, associated with Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And uh, he's a good uh, trainer, teacher, and a writer. A very good critic writer. And he also contributed several articles in the uh, newspapers, you know, print media. And uh, now I invite uh, Sri Adiraj Satinarangaru. The floor is yours, sir. You have 10 to 15 minutes. Thank you very much, Dr. Subarauji, and everybody. Good morning, and in Indian tradition and customs, pranams to all of you. By an example, a wonderful topic was assigned to me, as I am from the clan of Ramakrishna Mission, the Vekananda Institute of Human Excellence. I'm a senior faculty in Vekananda Institute of Human Excellence. And there, when the leadership comes, who else other than Swami Vekananda, the spiritual leader, the noble leader, like Mother Teresa, is a genius leader like Einstein. All the qualities are imbibed in a leader and which are very much essential for a leadership. And when Swami Vekananda, he said that, it's a very common and very popular quotation, weakness is death, strength is life. So what is strength, physical strength, mental strength, and all standards of moral strengths? As he said, ethics, values, morals, so and so. So he said that first you regain the physical strength 
then only you will be able to learn, preach, and practice. And the confidence levels and the physical strength and the inspiring mind within him has led him to the Parliament of Religions in 1893. Before entering the hall, he lost his invitation, he lost his pass, and he lost everything, and he was barely standing on it. But the confidence and belief, he has belief, he believed himself, and that confidence has made him to enter the hall. And initially, he was hesitant to move on to the stage. When once the stage was given to him, he was the monarch of the stage. And the first words what he has spoken, you know all, everybody, the brothers and sisters of America. But so the first words what he has coined, even after 125 years or more, they are still valid when we start a meeting or a lecture or a talk. We generally say these words. That is how we inspired the entire world. In the modern world, let's come back very slowly. The leadership qualities are very much limited in five principles. Besides that, the leader in political span, we can take Mahatma Gandhi, who preached a nouns of practice. A nouns of practice is more than tons of preaching. Before giving any advice, before taking any political action or anything, first he practiced, then only he has given to his followers. He inspired his followers like that. When comes to, when it is Nelson Mandela from South Africa, how he inspired the entire nation, how he struggled, when he has taken over the mantle of South Africa, all the police officers, other officers were afraid to talk to him, see eye to eye with him. But the great quality of leader is forget and forgive. That he has practiced. He called upon all the police officers, all the senior officers, he told them, you have done your duty according to that government rules and regulations. Now you are with me. You follow my guidance, my rule of administration. What a great leadership. And they have allowed the competition. The true leader will allow the competition to reveal the talent in, among the constituents. accept and appreciate these two are the big qualities of any leader and social responsibility because our subarao is an environment plus and purushottam uh, kredigaru they are all very much a pain to see the recent floods in hyderabad because they were advocating since decades that something is going to happen like this but no successive governments cared about their advice. And total floods last year inundated Hyderabad. So social responsibility, they were preaching. So what is social responsibility? Something you give to the society. I will take a small example from Assam. A boy at the age of 16, He started planting trees, bamboo trees and other trees. And after two decades, he has almost planted trees, 550 hectares of land, totally occupied by the habitants like animals, birds, etc., etc. He protected the environment. He protected river Brahmaputra, its course of flow. So social responsibility is a must for a leader. 
and the five important things which a captain or a leader must imbibe is he must be a model he must be an inspire inspiration he must accept the challenge he must enable and he must encourage he should accept the challenges he should give the credit to the constituents and accept the failure as a leadership failure here one more excellent example of dr apj abdul kalam when dr apj abdul kalam was serving isro as an engineer one satellite rohini was launched from isro in the year 1979 and it's bombed it fell into bay of bengal and abdul kalam was disturbed and he doesn't want to face anybody even his colleagues chairman press then came the actual leader the real leader inspiring leader a role model leader dr satish dhawan who was the then chairman of isro he said i will like address the press conference and he went to the press and said only one word today we are failed and i assure my friends next year by this time we will launch successfully another satellite what a great leadership was accepting failure and giving credit success to the constituents abdul kalam was so pleased he worked day in and day out and next time in 1980 when they have launched a satellite rohini it was very successfully launched then what happened you see the leadership quality satish dhawan asked apj abdul kalam go and address the press conference abdul kalam was really surprised sir last time you have address this time also please go and address the conference abdul kalam you go and address as a leader i am asking you to go and talk to the press that was the quality of the leader when it comes to the modern times jack welch general electrical company a great leader in the year 1981 he has taken over general electrical company when he has taken over general electrical company electrical company its net worth was 12 billion dollars it was in red and he served two decades and exactly in 1981 he 1981 to 2001 in 2001 when he left the company the net worth is 410 billion dollars how he inspired how he has taken in them into confidence all those qualities are just they are role models like model inspire challenge enable and encourage they are coming from decades onwards in the, another small example you must have heard the pennsylvania bethlehem ship building and steel company it was in deep red unions were strikes doing strikes and company went into deep red then they have called one leader charles crab he is not an engineer he is not an expert in metallurgy he is not expert in any categories only he is expert in soft skills that is leadership qualities he was called then he has implemented how he has implemented and improved this entire bethlehem ship building and steel factory he stood as a model he said leadership is not a title it's an example i will stand as an example for you and he inspired he called them he has taken suggestions from them good suggestions he has encouraged and he has implemented he has asked everybody to do something and give good suggestions for improvement of the society and he has taken it as a challenge the third one is challenge he has taken it as a challenge that entire 
He has asked all the union members, all the staff, made them sit together and they chatted out a program, United program. And all the unions were scrapped for some time. Sorry. And he made party to the organization. He has impacted the organization skills in the staff. He has motivated, inspired, and he has extracted double work from the workers. Because they are cooperating all the company within a decade, within five, six years, it has come into green. So he has enabled them. He has given the chance. He has given them. He has given full liberty to them and has encouraged him. And he has said, when the failure comes, he has accepted. When the success comes, he has given to them. He has celebrated the success and he has appreciated the workers and the success was celebrated openly and the, the workers are more motivated and they have done for the betterment of the company. Therefore, please, as I said earlier, yes, sir. Please, okay. okay. As I said you earlier, leadership is not a title, it's an example. You should lead as an example. My dear friends, hard work may be give you success. Leadership make you successful. I repeat, hard work may give you success, but leadership make you more successful. Thank you, Namaste. Thank you so much, Sri uh, Adira Sakrar and Garu. And really, you could bring out the, the Indian cultural ethos and uh, the fundamental principles and practices which Ramakrishna mission and Vivekananda Institute, you know, imparts to the young generation in this country. Yes, it is the committed hard work which makes more successful. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's my pleasure now and honor to invite Dr. Ellen Saunders. Ellen Saunders is president and CEO of uh, uh, Saunders Consultancy, LLC. He conducts teaching, training, workshops, seminars, and courses aimed at empowering business leaders, teachers, administrators, community leaders, student leaders, social workers, and parents to implement and teach character education, leadership training, ethics, interpersonal communication skills enhancement. He is the Chairman Emeritus of the Conference of Non-Governmental Organizations, Committee on HIV, for organizations that have consultative status with Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, at the United Nations. He is the Educational Advisor for the UNESCO Center for Global <coughs> Education. Mr. Saunders has lectured and conducted workshops in ethics, character, education, and communication skills training in 84 countries internationally and in the US. He, he has spoken on the panels at the United Nations and gave presentation on moral education and HIV prevention. I invite uh, Dr. Alan Saunders. Dr. Saunders, the floor is yours. You Thank have you very much for that presentation. Yeah. Okay. Could you... Uh, um, while I'm waiting, I'll thank uh, Philbert Seeker for the opportunity to work with him on the Center for Leadership and Character Education that uh, we're forming here in the US and that we've done programs at the United Nations. Sir, you are the host. Thank you very much.
So for uh, leadership and character education, as uh, Philip Sika mentioned, we began at the uh, African Union in 2018, and since then we've done different programs. Today I'll be talking about the centrality of character in leadership and empowerment. Uh, I'll be speaking about effective practices in character education, service learning, leadership empowerment and enhancement and interpersonal communication skills. And uh, these are all important areas in the development of character and leadership um, empowerment. As many have mentioned, 2020 was a year of crisis. We had the Black Lives Matters uh, protests. We had the COVID-19 situation which is still ongoing now with half a million deaths here in the U.S. A lot of calamity, a lot of turbulence around the U.S. election and the insurrection on January 6th of this year. So to begin with, I'd like to talk about a book by Peter Feierstein. It's called Crisis of Character, Building Reputation in the Age of Skepticism. And I see in the, uh, I'm watching in the screens, some people are taking photos of these PowerPoints. We'll, we'll make these available for you. Uh, at least mine will be available. I'm almost certain Dr. Davison will also, and uh, Dr. Okika. So Dr. Feierstein released this at the United Nations, and he talks about different stakeholders. And one of the stakeholders are the workers in, in the, the company. Another stakeholder is the communities. And then another is the interest groups. And Dr. Um, Feierstein goes around the world um, working with companies like uh, um, Nike, BP Oil, and different companies, and trying to guide them to be corporately responsible, not just to focus on the bottom line, which all companies do, but also to have uh, responsibility to the communities where they're working in, and especially in developing countries. And one of the situations that occurred in South America, BP was building a, a, a power line, an oil line through several countries. And in each of these countries, they set up million dollar programs that were run by local people that made the decisions on how the pipeline um, was developed on where it could go and major decisions. And none of the BP uh, executives could go over those decisions. So it's very much working with local, uh, local communities, environmental groups in being able to sustain uh, environments rather than just being able to do what, whatever they, they want to do. A key point in this is college students uh, from US and Europe and how they have operated internationally uh, to take photos of different companies like Nike in the sweatshops shop in China, for instance, and being able to change situations like that. Many young people say to me, well, what can I do? I'm just one person. But actually, people can do a lot uh, as one person, and especially young people going out and working in developing countries uh, can change the situation. I had the good pleasure of working uh, in uh, Kenya with a group of such young people in a project. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. III is in Atlanta, Georgia here. Um, and he's done uh, service projects nationally and internationally. I had the pleasure of working with him, a group of 25 young people in a tree planting project and a cleanup project in Nairobi, Kenya, 15 years ago. And Dr. King stated, Anybody can be great because anybody can serve. And this is really the, for me, this is the key essence of successful leaders. Successful leaders are, are people of, as Dr. Davidson talked about, exemplary character, but also they lead, not just talk about being a good person, they lead that way to King Jr. III, an incredible person, very, very humble. And that's, I think, another key element of successful leadership is they're not arrogant, they don't boast, uh, but they're very, very humble, as is Dr. Davidson, Dr. Lacona that um, Dr. Davidson talked about. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, they were the 
main educators in the Smart and Good High School report that went to every single high school in America and they gave work workshops around the, con the country and I had the pleasure of you know, Rutgers University in about 2008. Singing out on the streets was something simple, but actually having making it very, very intentional, having goals to begin with, action steps, and then a reflection afterwards. And service projects aren't for people from socioeconomically challenged countries as much as it is for the young people that are doing it themselves. Uh, Dr. Stephen Post wrote a book, Why Good Things Happen to Good People, How to Live a Longer, Healthier, Happier Life by the Simple Act of Giving. He's out at Long Island University um, in, in Long Island. And he has shown over 20 to 30 years that service projects that um, I've seen done by many different organizations can change the lives of young people. But again, they have to be in, in, intentional, not just oh, I'm just going to help some people because they don't have anything, but very intentional and very clear with the goals. Within the service learning, we need to be able to have partnerships. And this is where if you're in a developing country, uh, particularly in Africa, South America, and you build connections in many different places. Again, I've taught at uh, in the schools in Patterson, New Jersey for several years, and I've taught at um, William Patterson University on a leadership program there. And many, many young people say, well, what can I, I do? But actually a lot can be done. And an example of that is what Dr. Ada Okike will be following me, that I worked on the Conference of NGO Committee on HIV AIDS. She's created a model school in Nigeria. So if you want to learn about how what we call the sustainable development goals work, uh, you can uh, learn from her and her presentation and the group that she created, the UNESCO Center for Global Education. With my experiences of doing service on the NGO committee uh, as a chairman, I, I went from being a committee member to being a vice chair to a co-chair and eventually represented all 27 of the Congo committees, a conference of NGO committees at a international event with the board in Thailand. And that was mainly through service, uh, service programs. One of the questions I've always asked in my 40 years of doing different elements of character education and service learning, particularly for the last 25 years, is, was why do some young people make it and others don't? And it's very interesting to me, this type of question, because some young people from, for instance, Tarrytown area, extremely wealthy, fall through the... And then I go to Zambia in Southern Africa and I see a young person creating an incredible NGO and learning how and created elements of how to uh, do they, why do some children and teenagers struggle and others fall through the system? And particularly today, because of COVID, we have a certain amount of opioid addiction here in the US and an incredible amount of suicide that's occurring. But young people don't have so much of a, a purpose and direction in their lives. And Dr. Benson talked about developmental assets. Sort of have uh, for high risk activities and in each of those the ones who have a very small percentage of them get involved with alcohol tobacco drugs many uh, young people become pregnant uh, anti-social behavior problems at school gambling whereas the ones that thrive and this is a study done of 217,000 students in over 300 different cities in the u.s so there's a lot of research behind this and the thriving ones succeed in school, help others, value diversity, maintain good health, exhibit leadership that Dr. Davidson talked about very eloquently, resist danger, delay gratification and overcome adversity. 
And within that, there's a key element of the moral side, the internal side of developing character, but another key element is the external side of the community connectedness. And also he found that they have to have a coach or a mentor to be able to look up to, to follow behind. And within this, there's five action strategies. They engage adults, they mobilize young people, they activate the sectors of community that are doing positive work, they invigorate programs and they invigorate civic decisions. So there's a key element of successful programs that young people can do to become successful. Another effective practice that I'd like to talk about is conflict resolution, because not everything that happens uh, is good in society. And my wife and I taught uh, a course at a graduate level connected to State University of New York in uh, New York City. And this was by a program by the Arbinger Institute. <clears throat> and in that program, they've done 30 years of research looking at how people over overcome difficulty, overcome conflict. The main program is uh, leadership and self-deception, how to get out of the box. And that's focused on, on the business side. The program that I wanted to talk about today is the anatomy of peace, resolving the heart of conflict. And within this, two very unlikely people came together. I'll read from the text. Particularly, we assume that people who are in conflict want solutions, and they do, of course. Parents of belligerent children want the belligerence to end. Those who work for tyrannical managers want an end to the tyranny. tyranny. Citizens of weak, weakened nations want to be treated with respect and so on. People want solutions, but notice that the preferred solution in each case is that others change. One of the questions I always ask people is, can you change? I ask teachers all over the world, can you change your student? Nearly every, every teacher says, yes, of course, that's my job. But can we really change another person? I know I've been trying for decades and decades to change the attitudes of my wife. Do you think I was successful? Talbot Seeker and Dr. Ada can answer that question for you later. <laughs> so coming back to the text, should we be surprised then when conflict lingers and problems remain? What if in our conflicts with others there is something we want more than solutions? What if conflicts at home, conflicts at work and conflicts in the world stem from the same root cause? And this is where the key of this brilliant of this program comes in. What if individually and co collectively we systematically misunderstand that cause and unwittingly perpetrate the very problems that we think we are trying to solve. These are among the important questions explored in this novel, novel The Anatomy of Peace. Through an intriguing story of parents struggling with their children and with problems that have come to consume their lives, we learn from once bitter enemies the way to find peace whenever war is upon us. Yusuf al Falah, an Arab, and Avi Rosen, a Hebrew, each lost his father at the hands of the other ethnic cousins. The anatomy of peace is a story of how they came together and the help they, they, how they helped warring parents and children come together and how we too can find our way out of struggles that weigh us down. They do a program that is in the desert of Arizona and they bring the, the young people out there and some of them try and escape and obviously there's no way to go and they come and rescue them. And they teach them how to survive and how they have to help one another in that survival process. But interestingly, they bring their, the parents there too, because in many cases, it's what the, the, the struggle that exists in parents. In the US, according to research at the University of Washington, 95% of uh, families are dysfunctional in the US. So we have a lot of issues and it's, it's character education is not only done in the schools, it's done working in the families and working in community. Another program I'll very quickly mention is Operation Respect by Peter Yarrow from Peter, Paul and Mary. That's a program that you can download. Uh, I've done workshops. One workshop I did in a um, small island in the Pacific uh, was so successful. They used the whole, um, there's a, a rap song. They used that for the whole seven day workshop. I'll, I won't talk too much about the Sports is Life program, but that's an excellent book um, that you can look up. It's lessons learned and applied to business in life. And Dr. Le Dr. Davidson talked about the Institute for Excellent Ethics that uh, has phenomenal amounts of material. 
Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Allen. It was quite interesting, particularly uh, you and uh, Dr. Davidson spoke on sports and leadership, you know, which is a very rare area. People uh, make any attempt in that. Thank you so much, and I request you to make me the host. Okay. So if I push on your name. Yeah, it's on the top only. Make host. Can you, can you have it now? Yep. Do you have it? Change the host. Okay, do you have it now? Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And now, um, it's my pleasure to invite and introduce Dr. Ada Joni ok Okia. Hope Okika. I have spelled it correctly. Is okay. an educationist, capacity development, knowledge management expert who develops programs, who develops programs, strategies, and organizes education and training, carries out research and ensures successful implementation of initiatives, especially on peace, women, school support programs. Her strengths in developing ideas into programs and building top performing initiatives have earned her repeated uh, commendations and formal recognition from the colleges and peers. As an advocate, she has provided advisory notes to legislative houses on education of children, improvement of community classrooms, on quality and inclusive education. She has addressed gender issues and women in less privileged situations and annually empowers women in community through education, economic empowerment, and trade exchange. And uh, today, uh, Dr. Aida is going to talk on education and sustainable development goals. Dr. Aida, the floor is yours. The time is 10 to 15. Please. Thank you. Thank you, and good morning, everyone from here. Good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are, where you are participating from. I want to thank the organizers of this event for having me to share my uh, opinion regarding the education and sustainable development goal. And I want to appreciate, uh, especially my boss, Alan Sanders, for all his encouragement ever since we met and started working together at the UN. And um, I'm glad to see my good friend, June. <laughs> Long time, June, how are you? Um, thank you, Dan. Thank you. Yeah, um, well, it's a very good, uh, interesting topic to share opinion on SDGs and education. And I'm aligning the topic on SDGs, education, character, and leadership. For most of us, we all know that in every facet of life, education is paramount, no matter the way we look at it. But however, education without character is like what I grew up with uh, from my parents, drinking tea without sugar. Education and character are interwoven leading to moral, civic, good manners, behaved, behavior, non-blowing, healthy, critical, successful, 
uh, and socially acceptable being. Leadership simply exhibits this character in practical terms. So when you look at education, character, and leadership, they are all interrelated. Without education, we cannot develop to have character. You know, in terms in developing countries, in, a, in an environment or in a gathering, when you see someone that is educated, you know the person by the behavior. And if we have all these character behaviors and then you exhibit them, then you are a good leader, no matter the level of leadership, whether it's from the home, whether it's in the leadership in society or peer group influence and all the rest of them. So you see that education, character, and leadership are all interrelated. Professor However, Saunders, we're looking at your screen. I'm sorry to interrupt. We're seeing the screen of Professor Saunders right now while you're talking. Yes. So if yes. we're, Reverend, Professor Saunders, if you can stop sharing. Professor Saunders, can you stop sharing your, your screen? And I can't see myself. Yeah. So, so on the share screen, just on click back, please. The, the the host have to undo share screen from his end. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So you see that education, character, and leadership are all interrelated. The ongoing development agenda, which is the Sustainable Development Goals, has noted that the SDG 4 seems to be, is the, 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 the bone, the bedrock of success in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. In the fact that when the SDGs were created, there is this uh, addendum that leave no one behind. And if we are talking about leave no one behind, therefore everything that has to do with education and having uh, uh, produced a, 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 a total educated person being found worthy in learning and character, then education, character, and leadership should also be part of the global agenda on leave no one behind, you see. So when we talk about education, when we go to school, especially from developing country where I come from, uh, we see that people get educated, but drop off character. We're all interested in having letters oh, he's a doctor, he's a MLC, blah, 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 and all the rest of that. But we are not interested in ensuring that we educate, we acquire character from what we do. And that is why we have issues that when you stay into work, in your workplace, there is a lot of uh, irrelevant character being exhibited as a boss, as an attitude. Why should we fight, talk about, uh, spend time to fight corruption? find career in discipline, fight violence against women. These are because we go to school, we acquire letters, we are just interested in the dignity of the letters we have and not as between the quality and characters that is associated with teaching and learning. But what surprises me more that at the point of graduation, we are all graduated with the world, having found worthy in character and learning. But when it comes to reality of application, we seem not to put them in place, which is not really right. So the SDGs is not talking to talk about leave nothing behind. If we are attending the education, if you are going to school, if you are putting it in practice, ensure that nothing is left behind. Don't think that leaders are just those in top government positions, those who are presidents, ministers, and not the rest, commissioners in position. No, everyone is a leader in your own in your own little environment. 
But how do you now exhibit those leadership qualities? It's as a result of, of education you obtained leading to character. So we have to understand that um, for us to actually achieve all needed on SDGs, especially SDG 4, which is quality and inclusive education for lifelong learning, we must understand the significant need of, of, of marrying character in the cost of our education, which will finally transcend to our place of work, public society, a public image, and then leadership. Because a good leader is one who chose by example. And if you are a leader and you talk about corruption, you talk about intimidation, uh, career intimidation, professional intimidation, or if you are a professor in the college, you talk about intimidating female students and all the rest from graduating, then you are not really carrying out what we call character and leadership. Your education seems to be half-baked. And that is what we have to really advocate. As we move along the, 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 the decade of action, which is fast running away, by 2030, we have all achieved, we have to be focused on ensuring that the products we bring out for schools, the products we graduate from colleges, from high institutions, are really fully baked products who are also uh, 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 impacted actual character and leadership qualities. Because that is what the SDG is talking about. Quality and inclusive education for lifelong learning. Quality is not just uh, 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 reading to pass exams and get letters to your name. Inclusive, not just uh, achieving a good degree to pass exam and come out. It has to be all inclusive, which character and leadership are all included. Our education system must be one that should include the learning to know all about character leadership, all about the total person, so that people will see you as, an, as, a, as a role model. Remember that your image transcends to generations. People see you and learn about you. You know, of recent, we are uh, Nigerians are so uh, uh, pleased with uh, the new executive director of. Uh, 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 World Trade Organization, Gozo Konji Wada. A lot of stories, her foundation and everything, her background, her parents, the kind of upbringing it had been shared across the media. Role model. So which means what you are trying to do is for, for uh, learning to know all about character and leadership, all about quality, all about inclusiveness. And the, the summation of this is outcome for the lifelong learning. We also need to know learning to do. Of course, when you are graduated from school, having found worthy in learning and character, then do the right thing in your place of work, in the community, in their gathering. You know, don't tend to uh, 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 use your, exact your power for intimidation. Don't just exert your power to, to destroy people because these are not part of what you learn in school. We want to put education into real practical terms, not just the letter terms. And this is what we make this, especially we that come from developing countries. We are so much attached to letters, to our name. And that's not giving us the right instrument to be, uh, to see the, to build a future that can be more sustainable. We also need to know about learning to be, be what you have learned. The, no, no, no university or no college, no school will teach you to steal when you are at work. No school will teach you to be corrupt. So learning to be what you have learned, that righteousness, that character imparted in you by knowledge. You see, learning to be. But at times, we ignore some of those things because probably environmental situations, the, 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 the changing dynamics of the planet, a lot of things are inclusive, a lot of things are involved. Therefore, putting us away from the right track, which is not really the proper thing for development. And it's affecting the younger generation because when they see what the adults are doing, there's no way we can solve the issue about corruption when the adults are not doing the right thing, which the younger ones are seeing. And the summation of this is learning to live together. 
when you are living in a community, people are not afraid of you. You know, like where I live in New York, people are afraid. You can't leave your door. You can't. You can't go. You can't come in late night because of the kind of situation the environment is. So learning to live together should be the summation, the totality of character and leadership. So I would want to encourage what we are doing in this uh, Center for Leadership and Development, that more efforts should be geared towards developing a curriculum. I had once worked uh, with Alan Sanders on character education in schools in Nigeria. And he found out that those character uh, um, curriculum seems to be true and putting it into play was difficult because of what fear of unknown in one of the one of the person I, I discussed with on the trying to implement the process said what do i intend to achieve that was the question character education in schools you know what do i intend to achieve i said we tend to achieve all righteousness we tend to achieve a better person and that was how it ended so we see that we are still afraid of unknown seeing character as a threat to development as a threat to humanity you know so we need to really put more efforts in all this uh alan has mentioned about research studies has done and all this other work let's team up let's have a teaming spirit to bring this together Couple with other speakers' uh, interventions and uh, opinion, bring it together to see how best we can bring out the, the the meat into what we are trying to achieve for the sustainable development goal. Bearing in mind that the decade of action is fast running, we have less than ten more years to go, and a lot still need to do. And this is exactly on education. I thank you, Madam Aida. Thank you so much. You know, you could uh, you are so crisp and. Uh, you know, you were, I was uh, afraid till yesterday when my friend Phil Bick was saying, you know, we do not have any women speakers. There is a saying in India, educate a woman, you educate the family, you educate the society. Educate a man, he will only make money for his selfishness. So today I could see many, you know, women participants in, the, in this platform. And I, I thank uh, one and all. I once again thank you, Madam Aiza, for your, you know, motivational speech. And uh, the now the actually uh, I invite and introduce. It's my pleasure and honor, Professor Purushottam Reddy from India. Professor Purushottam Reddy, are you on the line? Professor Purushottam Reddy. Professor Purushottam Reddy. Huh? Before that, I want to introduce my good friend, uh, Mr. Shivkumar, you know, who runs this channel. Shiva. Yeah, yeah, sir. Shiva, I want, I want to introduce you to these people. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. You know, last eight months, he is supporting us, you know, taking these, uh, you know, um, issues at the international and global level. We started with democracy first, and then we're keeping on identifying people across the world and, you know, creating a common platform for you know, uh, higher commitment and deliberation. I request one and all to subscribe to this channel, which is supporting us, and it takes only the issues concerned with humanity, development, and environment. Thank you so much. Please support and subscribe this channel. Professor Purushottam Reddy, are you there? Professor Purushottam Reddy. So I request uh, 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 Porus Dadabai. Porus Dadabai, are you there? Porus Dadabai, please unmute your mic. Yes, I am here. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Uh, briefly, you can, uh, you know, some, some three, four minutes, you know, you can share. 
and we have a good number of women leaders. I would like them to share uh, and you know their you know experience. Uh, Dr. Porus Dada, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, I was I was really impressed with uh, Mr. Davidson and Mr. Saunders because I live in the United States and uh, but I see uh, I see a change on education uh, going to grit and resilience and it's more or less highlighted in in a book I just recently read by Dr. Michael Brady and he goes through the eight that you need to develop in young people so that they become communicative and, and I see you're nodding your head and also the 10 tactics for parents that he uses. I find that very valuable as a matter of fact. I teach it to young lawyers at a citizens advocacy center who are in internship on community, on community law. Uh, the, the other issue is peace. And, and it, is, it is developing very heavily in the United States because of gun violence, Black Lives Matter, the recent incident on uh, June, on uh, January 6th, and also the recent QAnon article on 60 Minutes. And we are very actively involved in peace because we see that as a paramount problem currently. And we are looking at also a combination of com commonalities between terrorism in the Middle East and in the United States and what are the vital factors that have a common thread that causes this sort of behavior. It's very difficult for children in the United States to grow up with character and the qualities you have said when the adults don't set the example. And I think leadership involves adults and one of the things that's most important is the parental guidance which which is not which i which which i have difficulty visualizing in america thank you very much and thank you for the time subaraguru purushottam reddy purushottam Please unmute your mic. Yes. It's a small so, request. Yeah. It's the first time, you know, we have people from uh, South America and other places. Also. Yeah. So um, I, I request you to, you know, uh, I, I, I'm just uh, uh, proposing that, you know, let these people share for three to four minutes their experiences. Yeah. Before yes. you sum up this, please. Yeah. Okay. I, I agree. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, Carol. Miss Carol, are you there? Okay. Miss Carol or Laurel Richardson? Carol is there. Carol is there. Laurel Richardson? Carol is there. She uh, let her unmute. Yeah, Carol. Carol is there. I'm just trying to. Uh, madam, uh, unmute yourself, madam. Carol, madam. Unmute, unmute your mic, madam. Carol. She's there. She's just watching. Madam, unmute yourself. Carol. Carol, please unmute your mic. Laurel, yes. please Carol, unmute right your mic. She has done. Yeah. She has done. Carol, yeah. Hi. Hello, how are you? Yeah, Carol, uh, I request, I invite you to share your experiences and, you know, uh, your thoughts for three to four minutes. Oh, okay. um, hi, um, I'm a friend of um, Trina Yearwood, and she invited me to the, Dr. Trina Yearwood, um, she invited me to the um, talk on Sunday, and I heard um, Dr. Okika and Dr. Saunders speak, and I wanted to join in today. Uh, I'm an artist. I just um, completed graduate school at Parsons School of Design. And um, I'm also an educator in uh, visual art education. So um, I'm interested in research and uh, what's, you know, what are the needs of education um, in some of the 
uh, countries such as Ghana and Nigeria and um, just here to hear um, what everybody has to say and do research. Thank you, Thank you so much. Lord. I request Carol, please unmute your mic, madam. Yeah, please. I invite you to share your experience, your thoughts, please. My thoughts? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't expect to be um, called upon to speak. Uh, my thoughts on character education, I, um, I am uh, very conscious through the work that I've done, uh, service projects in the past, in particular in Central America and Honduras. Um, recently, uh, I've been working by request of the mayor of one of the towns in Honduras to um, organize character education for the youth in that city, because we've realized that um, in order to be people of goodness, uh, we really do have to concentrate on character. I've been working with young people for many, many years, but uh, it's, it's only through service and through giving that um, the young people can really understand uh, the meaning of life, the meaning of our life uh, as people. I, I remember in particular my own son on a service project uh, finishing up a, a school that they were doing in Guatemala. And uh, he said to me, Mom, I realized through my experience here that it's not what you get in life, not what you can get in life, but is rather what you can give. Um, and uh, in, in those moments, in those uh, very um, important moments, I realize how important it is to be able to exemplify and to teach the importance of service and the importance of giving. Uh, there's no other way that we can understand love, that there's no other way that we can understand the meaning of our own life, except in relationship with other people. So anyway, that that's my my thought. I'm sorry, I'm not really prepared to be sharing Thank anything. You so, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. Uh, Beverly, Beverly Go Ekison, am I mean, spelling yes. out correct? Yeah, please, madam. Uh, we look forward for your uh, comments or thoughts. Well, first of all, um, I would like to tell everyone thanks for organizing such a unique um, event. Um, I'm Beverly Yexin, and I've been a member and mentor with Ambassador Sharon Pace in North Carolina. I've done a lot of work in Liberia, where I come from. And I think, as uh, Miss Caroline said, that teaching character, learning to understand love through service, um, that is so, so important. But I think cultivating the heart of character should start at a younger age, not when we are in our 20s, although it's never too late. Uh, and I think someone regularly said, do you expect my wife to change? I think it was Mr. Adesandris, you know, because when you're set in, in a certain mind frame, at an older age, it's very difficult to make that shift in your mindset. So thank you for having this. And I really like to see this implemented in a um, lot of US countries. Cultivating the heart and cultivating character should be taught in every schools in America moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, Africa too. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Mr. George? Mr. George. Me? Yeah. Oh, from, okay. Yeah, from which part of the world? <laughs> I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, United States. Okay. So anything you would like to share? Sure. Thank you so much, Mr. Subarao. Um, yeah, my name is Jorge. Um, I was invited here by Professor Alan Saunders uh, to learn more about character education. I think um, I like what Mr. Saunders mentioned about the juveniles. I, I studied uh, criminal justice in college, 
criminal justice. And so I have uh, some ideas about the best way to help people who commit a crime improve. And I think the presentation given by Professor Saunders about juveniles going to Arizona and uh, doing some kind of leadership and self-denial, self-deception, um, something like that. I think that was uh, an interesting approach. I think for me, uh, Mr. Subarao, I think what stands out the most is that when I was a teenager in high school in New York City, I was part of a, of a like an after school program. It was called Men of Strength, and I learned about healthy relationships. So I believe that uh, kind of through after school programs and character education uh, given to teenagers and young adults in college can be a good way to help us. Because that's when everybody's thinking, you know, when you're a teenager, young adult, you're like, your ideals start to develop. I know Madam Yekesen believes it should be younger, but in my own experience, I think it's good to um, talk about these things, especially to teenagers and young adults. That's what I kind of want to do in my future career as well. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, and now I invite Professor Purushottam Reddy to, you know, give some yeah. thoughts on the way forward. And uh, it's not that, you know, uh, is it generally the webinars are conducted, you know, some few people talk and others listen. But my practice is I would like, you know, all the other participants also to share this and make the our get together a, a lively and a fruitful and a meaningful <laughs> meeting. So uh, I also look forward towards Reverend uh, Norbert and Walter. And now the floor is uh, for Professor Pushota. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, at the outset, uh, I, I would like to compliment all the participants from so many countries coming together, trying to make a common cause at a very difficult time, you know, we are passing as a, plan as a planetary civilization. <clears throat> We are passing through extremely difficult times. There are so many global challenges. And as I, as a political scientist, teaching in the one of the largest department in the country, uh, that is Osmania University, Hyderabad, I realized the time has come for the citizens of the world. You know, we need to forget our small little uh, identities and then we need to come together and realize that there are global problems. As already, you know, we have one very good example of Bill Gates coming coming out with on how to avoid, uh, you know, the climate uh, disaster. So like this, everybody, you know, whether uh, citizens or corporates or governments, you know, we all need to come together. Fortunately, United Nations, has already done a lot of homework. You know, initially they came up with the World Commission on Environment and Development, and you know, the so many global conferences, like uh, from Stockholm to Rio to Paris, and uh, so many conferences on of parties on climate change and biodiversity. So a lot of effort has gone into uh, a, by the UN and it is helping the, our homo sapiens to come together and also to learn to make a common cause. Now, we are in a much bigger crisis. You know, pandemic is there, but much above, even more than that, we are in a climate emergency. And uh, which means that the planet Earth, our human civilization, which is about to face the sixth mass extinction, now, this is the time when we, you know, we need to come out of our shells and uh, we need to enter into global partnerships. So looking from that point of view, today's meeting is very, very significant. And I compliment uh, my friend Subarawji for the wonderful initiative we have been taking and networking with our dear friend uh, from Chicago, Mr. Porus and so many our friend in Africa, Gilbert is always there. And all the eminent professors and activists and teachers who have come together. Now, this churning process has to continue. 
we have a goal we have uh, the sustainable development goal now the as already pointed out by several speakers see you can inspire only when you practice and here i am reminded of mahatma gandhi who said who always would say that his life was his message the way he lived was his message to the universe similarly martin luther king nelson mandela you know, they are all men of uh, character and they have stood as glorious examples for humanity they are not leaders of just one small country here and there they are leaders of the entire planet earth so these these personality they inspire now the time has come for the citizens okay we are loyal to our family children and small little property that is not the issue we need to come out and you know connect to the major issues and we need to uh, go in for public policy initiatives sensitize the public if necessary pressurize the political systems and uh, one biggest danger right now all of us know but we are not talking enough and that is the danger from the corporates the multinational corporations or the transnational corporations maybe there are about 200000 of them and uh, they are they have captured everything not only the means of livelihood but even the natural resources and that is affecting uh, what we call the human rights of the people see we have to leave lot of space for the poorest of the poor in order to be you know they should be able to carry on with their livelihoods and uh, the corporates should not be encroaching on their means of survival that is they should not be uh, capturing the forests uh, the rivers and the streams and the biodiversity and i mean this approach uh, this greedy approach has to go and this can be controlled better by the citizens because most of the governments in the world they are working only to satisfy their respective corporates with this few initiatives uh, i once again compliment all the excellent uh, speakers and great human beings who have come together yes we have a noble mission and that mission is to save life and also to ensure its sustainability thank you subaroga yeah it's uh, most uh, interestingly you see leadership calls for element of sacrifice and whenever we talk about the building collective leadership the most important principle is inculcating sense of responsibility among the team member and also a sense of sharing sense of sharing sense of responsibility and sense of belongingness this is most important now i request you know we have one great gentleman reverend norbe uh sir can you hear me please unmute your mic yes of course i can hear you yeah please few words anyway my word first of all i want to thanks everybody uh i am nomi reverend norbert from congo brazzaville what we listen today uh i can say we need to educate more young people in the way those if the character well educated is going to have a big for us people are very intelligent but the character is very bad so that's why we need to give more education to people so that exactly we can change the world and because if education of character somebody must learn how to be very good to live for the sake of others yeah. and if live for the sake of others you cannot destroy them we love them even if for you to live for for them everybody i educated deeply in character will have a good world Yeah, thank you i think uh, we have some uh, uh, technical problem which is coming in thank you so much reverend norbe and it's very interesting you know uh, this refers to dr uh, you know uh, davidson and saunders uh, you know reference you see 
the football team members all are good everybody has high degree of you know some somebody has to uh, unmute mute you uh, i say unless and until all the team members of a football team learn understand their role they cannot make a goal so achieving the goal demands higher degree of understanding cooperation among the citizens as a team that what is my understanding anybody dr walter dr walter yes yeah please I did not come prepared. However, no, no. Um, my focus has been uh, uh, my focus has been on the inner city processes in both the northeast and the southeast. Uh, my focus has been such that discipline, self-discipline, is the key to success for any process that one endeavors to perform. Um, I go into jails and prisons. dealing with young men and young women who have not had that maturation process one of the problems that we have here in the united states is the lack of maturation uh you can go to other countries the children are actually digging graves or dealing with the elderly here in the united states our children are pampered thus they grow into such an attitude frame of mind that it negates their intellectual their spiritual their mental growth uh even their academic growth so the whole idea is to help them reinforce the ideology that their thoughts will create their words will create their actions will create their habits and ultimately create their character character again is just a result of something that is either positive or negative a switch that we turn on and off thank you dr walter you well uh, so anything you would like to share ms sharan ms sharan hello hello everyone yeah. well, i just think every everything was so wonderful i, I love uh, service and character education i believe that all problems can stop uh when we can have relationships and work together i did service for peace in north carolina for about 15 years and um it was so wonderful to see young people uh change their opinions about people for example even just going in and serving the homeless or food how their concepts were you know that this person is uh you know they've done something not good in their life that's why they're on the streets or they're stupid or they're not educated and then when we find out that some of them lost their home some of them lost their homes were divorced or had a webinar long no phd and they saw them in a little different way and also it's it's so good like dr bose said you know our children in america have truly been pampered and it's really nice that they get in there and serve others and get smelly and get in somebody's life and realize how lucky they are even to have a cell phone how lucky they are to even maybe have two parents how lucky they are so service is so so very important to grow our character and uh, I just truly wish in our public schools that some day it will be mandatory that we have character education in our schools. I know now service projects we're doing service projects in our schools but what I see I'm very very disappointed when I see the students serving it's it looks like they're just trying to get their hours. No, then do the part is not in the project. but it lets you really put your heart in your project and you really learn and have goals and have action steps like one of the speakers said it's hard to change anyway thank you so much i i love what everybody said thank you very much yeah thank you so much uh, to all the participants and uh, 
Uh, anybody want to give a closing remarks? You know, you can raise your hand. Or I just uh, hand over to my friend Phil Bitsika. Phil Bitsika? Are you yeah, there? Tell me now, you want to? Yeah, I would like to just pitch in just, uh, Please, just a little bit. What I would like to say is that character and leadership should not be just like a classroom kind of lectures and lessons, but should be more in a practical kind of way, like somebody was talking about, I mean, Mr. Subarao suggested football, in a sporting activity kind of way, where, a ch where children are not only taught the game itself, but also the rules of the game and to follow the rules, which I think is quite lacking in the United States. Children don't want to follow any rules. They just want to do whatever they feel like doing. So if you get into kind of a sporting activity where the children have to learn the rules and follow the rules and respect the empire's decision, that would be like an off-classroom kind of learning. And that would promote character and leadership, I think, in a better way. I work for, I'm trying to work for an NGO now in uh, promoting football as a social service. And I feel that children are learning a lot of things better in that way. That's all I would like to say. Thank you. I hope it, I hope I was audible. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Thank you to our uh, speakers. It was uh, actually, I don't know if it was a conference but, or a classroom. Uh, it was a very nice discussion. People express themselves from the bottom of the arts. Thank you very much to my in-law, Dr. Eda. Yeah, she, she really showed uh, our African mothers uh, education. Yeah. Thank you very much to Dr. Uh, Max Davidson, to Professor Alan, and all of us. I would like to, to conclude uh, this uh, conference by showing uh, a small video about Karata. So, Shubarao, if you can make me have a post. Hello, Shuba. Okay. Okay. It's the four minutes video. Mute your mic. Yeah, thank you. You are the host. Film it. Oh, we can't see the video. There's some problem, visual. The screen is not shared. Oh, the screen is not shared? Screen is shared. Well, it's not. Screen is shared, but uh, I think your video is struck. Video is only not. audio is. No video, only audio. Can you see the video? No, video not, not see able. Your computer. Except audio. Oh. The video is not shared? Right. No, it is not shared. Video not shared except audio. Oh, okay. Let me try again. Ah, oh, okay. So 
sorry. Can you see now? That does appear. Yeah. That's no picture. No picture. Except audio, there is some problem with your video. Did you choose the item you wish to share? You can only just hear the, hear the only audio, no, no video. There is some serious problem, <laughs> Phil. But you try it again. Maybe you are playing only the audio one. Select any other one which has video in that. YouTube and someone can go YouTube and just pull it up and share that. Yeah, Phil, yeah, Bit, there is some problem. Yeah. We can carry it on or we can share. The video is not sharing? No, 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 video no, is no, not shared. Oh, really? Yes. Just play it like that. Play it like that. End it. But because I will see if the video. Is... <laughs> we can go on YouTube and get it from there and share it. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm so. Okay. so just... I will send to you, yeah. Yeah, you just, you know, play the audio and we say bye bye. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe just give a summary, Phil. My suggestion. Yeah, I think it's a it's a video where you have a, a young boy from uh, on who is living on the streets, but he have his boy shoes, and uh, he was trying to repair his shoes, and he saw another young guy, uh, same age, who have a very nice shoe, and uh, when the train was uh, leaving the station, the shoes of a boy just uh, uh, removed. And uh, the other boy who have uh, his square shoes uh, run to carry it, but it was only one leg of shoe. And uh, he was uh, thinking if he have to take the shoe or give it to the owner. So he ran after the train, but he couldn't uh, catch the train and it threw the shoes. The shoe fell down and the other boy who was on the train just removed the second uh, 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 the second shoe and threw it to the boy. So it just show the character of a boy who was on the street. Even though you live in the street, wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you live, uh, you cannot change your inner character. Yeah, so that is the lesson I want. Thank you so much. Yes. And uh, can, uh, can, can, you you, much. can you switch on the thing? We can see probably everybody and say hello, bye. Yeah, I don't have the control again. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, Okay, so bye-bye, good night.
And we, we also have a guest from South Omai, Philip. Philip, where are you? Thank you all. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, you. So I say Asante and then goodbye. Thank you. Please subscribe this channel. We are working in promoting the you know the issues, universal issues. Please thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll make the recording available for everybody. Yeah, please. Definitely, you will have the uh, uh, YouTube as well as the Zoom recording available to everyone. Okay. Link is there on the YouTube, Dr. TSPR yeah. channel YouTube. On this day, you just go subscribe and go. The link is there. We are not changing it. Okay. You get Thank everything. You, you can download also. Thank you and good night, sir. God bless yeah, you. All. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Shiv Prasad. Good night. Good night. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Thanks, Mr. Thank Mr. Philbert. Thank you. Thank you. Anna, thank you, Anna. It was a wonderful Good experience night. and a, you know, <coughs> rather than, thank you. Good night. you know, unidirectional, it was a platform for everyone. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Good job. Good job, Philbert. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thanks again. Yeah.